So in their experience, photo is real. So when they say, oh, it looks like a photo, I'm like, ah, cheers. In the beginning, it used to really bother me. But, you know, I, I what I'm trying to do is going beyond that. I want to recreate an experience and be able to share that experience with the viewer. That's the chase for me. And it's not trickery or illusion per se. It's not to try and pull a fast one on the on the, on the viewer. But it what it's what it's doing is taking them out of a moment where they are and putting them in a new one. And I think also just get on my high horse a little bit here. I think maybe that's that's even needed in today's day and age, you know, with the amount of distraction that we have. Sometimes art is a way that we can access nature, something bigger than us, and, and just have a moment to check back in. And if in some small way I can do that with my work, I, I'd love that, you know, and, and that's what I try to do. It's what I try to go for. Welcome to The Bold Brush Show, where we believe that fortune favors the bold brush. My name is Laura Rangel Bear, and I'm your host. For those of you who are new to the podcast, we are a podcast that covers art marketing techniques and all sorts of business tips specifically to help artists learn to better sell their work. We interview artists at all stages of their careers, as well as others who are in careers tied to the art world in order to hear their advice and insights. On this episode, we sat down with fellow podcaster and an incredible artist, Andrew Tischler. Andrew is based in New Zealand and has been a professional artist for over 20 years. He focuses not only on producing the absolute best work that he can create, but also focuses on helping others learn to do the same through his podcast, YouTube channel, and Patreon, while also balancing his time so he can be present with his family. We discuss the importance of self-development to find your authentic voice, why being moved is the key to moving others, why art created with inner motivation is more powerful than art created from an exterior motivation, and how stepping into different roles can help you move forward in every part of your life. Finally, we discuss how to transition from day job to full-time artist, focusing on your time management to achieve that goal, and why working on your social media will pay off so long as you're patient and consistent. And to end things off, we talk about Andrew's teaching platform called Tish Academy and his upcoming courses where he will be taking his students through the fundamentals of oil painting. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. So uh, ha have we have we started yet? Are we starting? Or... Yeah, we're recording. So uh... <laughs> we're recording. Cool. Yeah. All right. You um, take it away. You're the host. Yeah. I got to remember, I, I this isn't my show. This is this is bold brush show. This is not this is not Tischler show. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, but I mean, I'm more than happy to like collaborate, you know, back and forth a little bit because I, I like to treat the cool. podcast as like a conversation as well. Obviously, we're here to talk about your yeah, work and, and all the amazing stuff that you've been doing all your life uh, while I've been, you know, like in the crib, um, <laughs> like just starting out. I mean, my <laughs> career hasn't even taken off and you're like, oof. You're like one of the first people that I actually heard about, you know, when I was first starting out. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's so cool. Like, I remember I would go on your YouTube and I'd be like, oh, <laughs> really? God. Yeah, of course. Oh, <laughs> so far out. Like, That's funny. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this is kind of like a crazy That's moment really in funny. my life. Very sweet of you. Yeah. Oh. Oh, cool. Oh, that's very, very kind of you. Thank you. I, I yes. always find that so funny because I know me and I, I, I just like, I, I don't know, I'm not that big a deal, <laughs> you know, but it's, but it's, it's good fun, man. I, I mean, I love to paint. I love to teach. And, and I started YouTube um, kind of, it was, it was a, it was a last ditch effort to just kind of um, make something of myself i was in a real dark spot when i started my channel but mm. i'm not sure where you want me to start with, with that well, but i can I, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions i'm an open book laura sure yeah well actually before we jump into that i would love to hear a little bit about you know maybe for some of our listeners maybe don't know who you are which i think that's very few of them um but you know just give us a quick little backstory on you and who you are what you do and then we can take off on the teaching Sure. Um, well, okay. I, 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 like a lot of people that I talk uh, to on, on my show, I, I was always the kid that drew. Uh, I was obsessed with art from a very young age, raised by a sculptor. My mother was a painter, but she left when I was two years old. And so I was raised by my father and my stepmother, but um, my, my dad really nurtured that artistic um, spirit in me when I was quite young. And I was quite curious about the natural world and, and, and animals and wildlife and nature was always part of my upbringing. So my father remarried a zoo veterinarian 
And there was always something going on with zoos. I would always find myself in the zoo, like on a school holiday or a break. And so naturally, you know, being an, uh, you know, a bit arty as a kid and, and having this abundant subject matter there and being stuck in the zoo, uh, I, I started uh, drawing and painting animals and, and I was really taken with that. And then also being a little boy, I was really taken with monsters, dinosaurs and aliens <laughs> and that, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, this was just something that was always around because my father was sculpting and drawing and, and doing his art it wasn't something that was forced on me, but it was just there. And of course, a lot of little boys, I want to be just like daddy. So here I am kind of following after his footsteps and and really so taken with, I, I even remember at the time, even being really young, just so taken with his work ethic and, and how dedicated he was to his art. I remember having an awareness of that just as a young child and wanting to be serious like that too. And so I, I would have been one of those weird little kids where if you had asked me, oh, you know, what, what do you want to be when you grow up, little boy? I, I would have said, well, I, I'm an artist now and that's not going to change. So mm -hmm. as I grow up, I'm just going to continue doing this thing. And fortunately, it worked out. So um, kind of fast forward a little bit. I, I, you know, I did OK in school, but I was a distracted student mm -hmm. and I, I really just wanted to draw and paint. And I I you know, got out of there, went into art school. So I did a, a tertiary um, university course, got a degree in fine art. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Uh, I think there's ways to study art that make sense in today's day and age, but there you, you really need to do your homework before you go into an art school to make sure that it aligns with your values and your direction in life. And, and it was just a poor choice on my part. Um, maybe I made some assumptions there. But after that, shortly after that, uh, there was a bit of a recovery process of finding myself after university. And then I went into full-time painting. Um, and so I say that, you know, I, I, at this point here, I've been a full-time artist for the last 20 years. I just turned 40. And I, and I pretty much went full-time 20, 21 years old around there. Um, but I say I went pro kind of while I was in my university uh, you know, doing my university course, because I just, I was just like, screw it, I'm just going to exhibit my work, I'm going to start selling my work, do commissions, and, and I was supporting myself. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, a, a lot of, a lot of my um, fellow classmates were, were, you know, they were working jobs, they were doing all their stuff, but I, I was making a go of it by, by painting. And so that, at the time, that I don't think the lecturers were too, uh, too happy about that. I had odd jobs here and there to try and make ends meet, but really officially full-time, never had another job since I was 21 years old. So I've been going since then. Um, and it's been great. I mean, there have been ups and downs, of course. Um, and so my work in terms of what I love to do, I, I, I'm just, I'm inspired by it all. It's really hard to kind of pin myself down to a specific subject or genre. I, I love landscape. I love painting big. I love animals and wildlife. I love portraiture. I mean, I adore portraiture. I, 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 you, you feel like you have a connection with your subject and you just want to capture that on the linen with, by pushing that paint around. There's something so amazing that happens when you're painting that I, I just, I'm addicted to it. You know, it's like surfers talking about the chase, you know, that perfect mm. wave or the search. You know, for me, it's a similar search of, of when you're painting, just trying to capture that thing. And so naturally, I, I was always, I've always been taken with realism and traditional realism. And, you know, as I was developing, I, I started to become aware of past artists, art history, um, some of my art heroes, and and then ultimately wanted to paint like them, wanted to be like them, you know, uh, the Hudson River School, 19th century painters from all over the world, you know, like here we've got uh, Ivan Olving uh, from Norway, mm -hmm. you know, he's a great painter. Um, you know, but others like like Bierstadt and, and Thomas Moran or in Australia, Arthur Streeton, Tom Roberts, Frederick McCubbin. Um, here in New Zealand, we have had an amazing portrait artist, Charles F. Goldie. And, and so I, I think there was really something that was captured. Uh, for me, that was the zenith of painting was right in that 19th century window. Mm -hmm. Just when photography started to come in, so, so painters were using some photographic reference, but they hadn't lost that 
ability to manipulate that paint. When I say that, I, I think something got lost after. Now, now we're picking up again. There's some talented painters working today. Mm -hmm. um, some amazing, amazing painters working today. But something about that 19th uh, century period, you know, whether it's Russia or the Victorians over in the UK, the Australians, you know, or elsewhere in Europe or the Hudson River School, there was something about that time where it was just... It was happening, man. It was happening. So I really wanted to paint like that. Um, there, I, I've told this story on my podcast but, and, and others that I've been interviewed on before. But there was a moment where I had saw, seen this exhibition called St. Petersburg 1900. And there was a painting by Ivan Ivanovich Shishkin. And I remember it so clearly. There were these... There were these dark trees, everything was caked in snow, but these dark trees were just breaking up that composition. And a little glint of light was coming through the, the open canopy and just illuminating some logs in the foreground. And it was massive, this painting was huge, but the way you'd done it was with such sensitivity and such care that when you stood in front of this painting, you felt cold you felt the wind or the slight little breeze on your skin. You, you felt like you were part of something that had been created by hand. And now I was like looking at this thing and just went, <laughs> just mind blown, it was 2005. And then at that point, like I knew I was gonna be an artist, but there was something about that moment that solidified in my mind, I wanna do this for the rest of my life. I wanna do that, that's what I wanna do. And I think it's important that we have these experiences. You know, if anybody's listening to this and, and they haven't yet gone out and experienced the best art that's out there, go to museums, go to galleries, immerse yourself in this stuff, find out what's possible, and then just go and do it. <laughs> Try your best to just go and do it. Yeah, so that that's my story in a nutshell. I, I'm all about it. I love nerding out and geeking out about painting. And, and I love passing on what I know to others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I mentioned too before, like, you know, I, when I first started out, you were one of the first like voices, you know, of, you know, talking about painting and how to paint and the business side also on YouTube. So you were one of my, mm -hmm. my first like intros into that world. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and again, full circle moment right now, which is so <laughs> trippy to me. Um, it's also wow. very interesting that you mentioned the uh, the Hudson River Valley School because I can see it. I look at your mm. work and I'm like, this is very Hudson River Valley. Um, it's meticulous. Yeah. It's careful. It's, but it's not overly literal too. Which is, you know, there's like a very refined balance in between being, you know, too photographic versus you know allowing the painting to breathe a little bit yeah. in like that you know, the, the the way that you personally express yourself in your work, which is, I think it has a really nice balance in that way. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Well, you know, I, I haven't yet, um, I, I haven't arrived at, at, at you know, me yet. I, I don't know what the, the final version of Tish is going to be, mm -hmm. but I, I really, um, I, I really try to recreate an experience. That's it. You know, it's it's not. And, and I have people look at my work and it's sweet. It's nice. And they say, oh, it looks just like a photo. You know, you, you have you have people that don't have the the art background, but that's that's the language that they use, because what is a photograph? A photograph looks real. It's a representation of real life. So in their experience, photo is real. So when they say oh, it looks like a photo, I'm like, ah, hey, cheers. In the beginning, it used to really bother me. Yeah. But you know, I, I what I'm trying to do is going beyond that. I want to recreate an experience and be able to share that experience with the viewer the way I was moved when I was experiencing Shishkin in the museum all those years ago. It's that that's the chase for me. And it's not trickery or illusion per se. It's not to try and pull a fast one on the on the, on the viewer, but it what it's what it's doing is taking them out of a moment where they are and putting them in a new one. And I think also just get on my high horse a little bit here. I think maybe that's that's even needed in today's day and age, you know, with the amount of distraction that we have. Sometimes art is a way that we can access nature, something bigger than us, and and just have a moment to check back in. And if in some small way I can do that with my work, I, I love that, you know, and, and that's what I try to do. That's what I try to go for. But ultimately, when you're trying to recreate an experience, 
then the entire discipline is unveiled in front of you because now you have to start paying attention to the way things work in nature in terms of visually. How do you do that? You know, what is going on when you look at the, the landscape, when you look at nature? How does the light work? You know, how does atmospheric perspective and depth work? How the heck do you get greens to recede? You know, and all of these things. And then, then it comes down to the actual art of picture making. How do you layer that color? What do you start with? What are you even going to paint on? What are you going to paint <laughs> with? And so this whole discipline was was opened up in front of me. And, and I, I when I started out... Now, I felt very much like I was thrown in the deep end. My father did the best he could with his limited painting knowledge. He, he, I mean, he had considerable knowledge, you know, compared to most. But being a sculptor, I didn't really have the, the background that I, I needed. So I had to really start getting that knowledge, that information from wherever I could. And so a lot of it was spent, you know, looking at books, mainly looking at pictures mainly looking at pictures. And I, I, and so side note, I was made to read as a kid. So consequently, I hate reading. I just don't like reading at all. Cause like, you can't make me do anything bad attitude. <laughs> but one thing that I would do is I, um, I would look at picture books, art books. And then because I really wanted to know what that painting was or who did it, um, or flipping through nature books. I wanted to know what that animal was, where it was found or whatever. I would force myself to read that little caption, but it hurt just reading a little caption that went to the picture. But what I didn't realize at the time is I was actually training my memory. And so now my recall as a child was starting to be trained so I could pull up names of artists or names of animals or all these little weird factoids. If you ever go with me to a pop quiz or a general knowledge quiz, I mean, I will wipe the floor with the competition. I'm your guy. I'll be on your team. I'm, I'm your guy in, in a general knowledge quiz. It just from, just from just picking up this random crap. I mean, I'll have Rachel sometimes just turn to me and just go. And also when I hear something generally, it's locked in there. She's mm -hmm. like, how the heck do you know that? How did you remember that? You know? <laughs> so anyway, side note. Yeah, no, I fully relate to that. I'm also the actually I have I have multiple friends who call me Google because I'm, I'm also a hoarder of ridiculous information that I like, they're like how do you know that I'm like honestly no idea <laughs> it just it just got stuck in my head no idea why <laughs> brilliant brilliant but, it's great to have that 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 recall though isn't it it's, it's nice it's I mean there's, you could yeah. don't get me wrong you could fill libraries with what I don't know okay you of could course. you could I, I mean I'm, I, I, I'm not Google over here but uh, <laughs> I uh, you know it, it was just interesting having that that mode as, as a child but having that reinforced. And then gradually, you know, back to, uh, on the art side of things, as you're learning stuff, learning techniques, and, and and you're researching this stuff, of course that helps. But the one thing that helped it stick in my my, my mind was doing it. And I was always just, just out there painting. You know, it, it just stuck in the studio, immersed in what I wanted to do. And I was always the guy, I lost a lot of friends, um, but I was always the guy canceling on everybody. And, I, and I'd make up an excuse. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I feel sick or whatever. I'm, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going out to the bar to drink with you guys. I'm not doing it. Yep. You know, I'm painting. I'm busy. Yeah. So they stopped calling. <laughs> oh, yeah. It kind of sucks too. It's like, I don't want them to call me, but I still want them to invite me. <laughs> yeah. Even when you don't no. get the invite, you're like, oh, that thing. You yeah. bastards. I missed out. You're like, well, you weren't going to come anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I relate to that also. I was also, I'm also the friend who's like a unicorn. If I show up, it's like, oh, like you're here? No way. Wow. <laughs> like, instead of your cave where you normally are? <laughs> I totally get that. Oh, man. But, you know, um, that also brings a lot of value to your presence. You know, like there, there are very few things that will pull you away from that thing that you're obsessed with all the time and it can be a good yeah. thing and a bad thing of course like anything but mm. i think it also makes you know oh i don't know it makes makes the moment when you are there a little more special <laughs> it does it yeah. does it does um and and the thing that i've i've had to work out later in, in life in, in recent years since becoming a father was that you you have to get that balance right and so for me you know, I've got a particular order in my life. And, and not that I ever follow that, you know, 
exactly because I'm a human being, mm -hmm. but God first, then my family. So my marriage, then my son, mm -hmm. then my art. So after those needs get met, then I can focus on the thing that, that I, I feel I was put here to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just, I, I, I don't, I also just don't want to miss out on those times, those, those beautiful moments with my, with my wife, those moments with my kid that, that I'm never going to get back, you know, and he's growing so fast. He's nearly two years old. It's, it's just insane how quickly the time's going, yeah. but um, he's getting bigger and bigger. And fortunately I've been there you know, to watch his first steps. I've been there to, to, you know, look for crabs under rocks on the beach. You know, I've been there for these little moments and, and I want to keep that going. So I, I do have the tendency to become obsessed and lose myself in my work. And I would happily work all day, every day and see no one. But, you know, again, we don't live very fulfilled lives when we do that. And I think mm -hmm. beyond what we do, it's it, it, we are who we are based on who we're with and those people you know i've uh, i'm so blessed laura to, to have the people in my life that are that are here because they, they make this experience so much richer it's that first it has to be that first for me but mm -hmm. uh but hey look i, I i'm I'm a, I'm a i'm a loner and i'm an art nerd and i would i would happily spend all my time doing that stuff but i gotta keep it balanced yeah absolutely yeah it's um mm. It's interesting specifically also that you mentioned like that balance because on the one night on the one side right you 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 know a father and i did mm -hmm. see you know i'm not a mother yet one day i will be but i do also consider like i saw this video this random video on instagram and it was like this guy that was first he was complaining about all the fingerprints on the glass on like the balcony like sliding door you know glass door mm -hmm. and then it flipped to this this um, psychologist who was saying, cherish those moments with those tiny little fingerprints because there's gonna come a time when you won't see them again. So instead of complaining yeah. about them, it's like cherish that moment. And I think that's also the beauty of, you know, yeah. having a family and having children is that children specifically live in the moment. They know nothing else because their lifespan oh, has been so goodness. short. Yeah that yeah, you know it yeah. it really brings you back to that experience of of just being in the what i like to call the eternal present because there's nothing else mm -hmm. there is just now just now yeah yeah um and it's like the yeah, meditative states absolutely. yeah that that monks talk about it's like you are experiencing mm -hmm. eternity in the moment and it's also something that joseph campbell mm -hmm. talks about and 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 Carl Gustav Jung, they all talk about mm -hmm. the eternal now. And it's so funny because recently that that hit me where it was like, of course, that's why I enjoy you know, doing exercise um, and also painting, because when you're painting, mm -hmm. there are those moments of flow, you know, that you've probably experienced where you're mm -hmm. just enjoying that one moment, painting that one part. Um, mm. And you just have, like all the voices in your head, just be quiet, <laughs> you know? Oh, really? I haven't experienced that yet. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I've experienced flow, but the voice is in the head part. Oh, oh that's still there. Oh, <laughs> I got to work be, on that one. I need a shrink. This could be a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the voice is also like they, they shut up when I'm like, you know, lifting weights because I love bodybuilding. Um, that's when they really shut up. But with painting, I used to have that, you know, just like, vibing sort of painting moments um personally mm -hmm. now though mm -hmm. i am on a sabbatical from painting um which i've mentioned okay. a couple times uh in other episodes as well because i right. had so okay. much schooling that it killed a lot of my joy <laughs> for painting oh my word yeah um and it's nothing you know nothing bad with school but you know not everyone thrives in those environments um, I have friends yeah. who God, they do great. They're they're doing amazing, you know, with what they've learned and they've yeah. gotten galleries and they've gotten stuff. Meanwhile, I'm like <laughs> I feel like I'm like limping and like, wait for me, guys, you know. Um <laughs> mm. but it's because I've mm. been extremely burnt out. Um and also uh, when it comes to like authenticity, right? Which is something that I really want to talk to you about. Um, when it comes to yeah. authenticity academic schools can sometimes really 
make or break authenticity uh for a lot of people oh yes yeah for sure it can really drown you for out sure. um and actually before i even went to these ateliers i actually went to a magnet school um which is actually it's kind of like a a specialized high school and mm -hmm. the the focus of that high school was actually like design and the arts so i studied architecture mm -hmm. in high school and also painting it it isn't like you know atelier style painting but i was already doing like artwork assignments for school for four years before mm -hmm. i even went to these ateliers so i can i can like count almost 10 years of just painting for school mm -hmm. um and it it's really been a huge challenge for me because it, it wasn't until mm -hmm. i officially decided okay no i need to to put a huge pause button on my life on my painting side um to allow myself to explore and rediscover joy um and i actually heard your episode with christopher rummers and i think you mentioned something around there about that too and especially christopher because he's he's so wonderful he's all about like going out in nature oh he's and, awesome oh I yeah love he's, him. he's the dude he's amazing yeah yeah, yeah. He's a great artist yeah yes he is fantastic mm. and also just a, an overall inspiring person um yeah and yeah. it was after my conversation with him a few months ago and also you know actually really deciding okay no this is this is time to stop and you know step mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. exist in the <laughs> outside of my head for a while um that mm -hmm. you know it made me start investigating eastern philosophy and also like authenticity and like what it mm -hmm. means to find yourself right but in like the deeper sense of not just you know like beyond painting like who am i right um mm -hmm. so i wanted to pick your brain a bit actually about yeah what authenticity means to you mm. oh wow um <laughs> and this is a huge topic this is a really huge topic mm -hmm. but I, I let me just start off by saying i relate so much to that you know we talked about that a little bit at the beginning you know losing myself when i went to art school and then there was a bit of a recovery period mm -hmm. so i relate to that so much and really the last 20 years have been me trying to just pick up those threads again and, mm -hmm. and really work out what is it that makes Tish tick? What is it that that really, that, that I'm responding to, that I wanna say? And that, that can sometimes take a lifetime for some people to discover, but I think we can get there a little bit faster. Now, I don't have a, a, a complete formula or a thought, and I'm by no means an expert on this stuff, but one thing that I've done over the last few years is is I've gone just full tilt into like j just aggressive personal development, just really trying to work out all of this stuff and trying to live a as as honorably, as honestly as I can, and to just be the person. You know, I, I heard somebody say this once. His name's Wes Watson, and he's he's got an incredible YouTube channel. Uh, filthy mouth on him though, but this guy is. <laughs> amazing what he's achieved but he said become the man that you're supposed to be or become the man that you admire and give him to the world now a lot of his stuff a lot of his content is geared towards men helping <laughs> men improve themselves because i think for the for you know uh, well it's it's the case with a lot of guys that they've dropped the ball you yeah. know and so we need to step up and take responsibility what does that mean and so i've been really exploring all of this stuff and it's interesting how it's kind of flowed on into my art and finding out who I am and what I want to say. But I realized early on from working on commissions in particular, when I would do work for a paycheck, when I would do work for some sort of external motivation, my work was pretty rubbish. It wasn't, it wasn't really hitting those, those notes where I was able to hit when I was really inspired. And so for, fortunately, pretty early on, I recognized that the work that I did for myself that was really exploring something that was deep within, and nobody asked for this, and no one was expecting it either. That, that's a really important thing because anticipation with, the, with your viewers or your audience can sometimes stifle that creative process. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're thinking, oh, they're going to see this. What are people going to think? Oh, people are waiting on this. And then you start getting in their head or you're allowing their, them to enter your headspace. And, and so now that external creeps in. 
you know, Joe Paquette and I were talking about this and, and he, he talks about it, you know, the external versus the internal. And I'm right there on that philosophy. That's, and, and this is one thing that we have to do as artists. And this is when it becomes a little bit of a trick making it work from a business side of things. Because if you want one way to lose your authenticity, it's to get lost on that business side and try and expect a monetary return on things that are supposed to be felt, creative, uh, sensitive, um, you know, and, 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 you know, great art. The minute you inject that business side of things into this, now suddenly you're, you're off on that external track again. So it's really balancing off out that internal with the external. And the way I do it is basically, I, I spend time in nature. I spend time with my subject. And I also spend time with those artists from the past, looking at their work, whether it's in galleries and museums or books, or even online. And I just see, and I, I, I listen to those triggers of what's moving me. Because those moments where you're moved, that's the gift. Now, to me, it feels like a real God connection. You know, and, and being a Christian, like I, 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 I really try to live and I want to be, you know, a servant. And, and, and so what I'm, what I'm doing is I, I'm thinking about those things continually. And, and when we're, I, I feel like when we're on track, when we're online, we're given these gifts and, and a moment, and it can be something so subtle, like the moment when sunlight hits a mountain and it explodes with color and suddenly you're like, whoa. Pay attention to that whoa. Pay attention to that thing just going far out. That's mind blowing. And so the thing I try to do is capture that moment, have a way of recording it in some way, and then recreate that and bring that back to life in the studio. Now, what actually ends up happening when we're on, when we're when we're really tapped into that thing that's moving us on a deep level. For some people, they'll, they'll might call that like a deep emotional level. For me, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. When it's moving you on that deep level, you can't even put it into words. And then you try and capture that. As soon as you create something based on that, now you have the opportunity, the gift of being able to share that with somebody else. But the minute you do something where you're thinking, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna really impress Laura. I, I she she loves this and and this is what I'm gonna do and 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 so I'm gonna paint this picture and I'm gonna hit all of those notes that were in that conversation that we had or whatever. And so I repackage this thing. I recreate this thing. I'm in my head. I'm trying to be a mind reader here and trying to interpret what's in yours. Now suddenly you look at it. You go, Andrew, this is very nice, but um, it's nothing like that thing you did before, hmm. you know. And so. Yeah. Recreate it, try to learn what those patterns are, what those triggers are, and get in touch with that. And and so that's that's where I start. And so in terms of authenticity, I just try to be present in the now, as you were saying, but with those moments where my mind is just being blown by by how amazing creation is. You know, how amazing sunlight is, how amazing these rocky forms on mountains are, mm -hmm. how amazing the clarity and depth of water is. And I'm just going, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, you know, just looking at all this stuff. It's mm -hmm. just, it's amazing. And then just, just trying to re recreate that, recapture that. But there is, the flip side to this is we, we as artists in, in this day and age, we, we should be, we need to be running a business. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I haven't met many artists, you know, there've been some, but for the most part, people want to support themselves with what they love doing. And so how do you do that? Now there's a trick. So again, you're, you're balancing out the internal. So the woe, that moment between you and your creator or you and the universe, if you're, if you're into that. So you're trying to balance that out with this, this new thing of now, now how do I create a product? Hmm. So, mm -hmm. For me, I have to have, and this is going to sound a little nutty, but I have to have different roles. I got different characters that I play. And so I, I have to get into a different identity totally. And I've got four major identities that I'm running in my life. One of them is a husband. One of them is a father. One of them is a businessman. And the other is the artist. Now, the, the, the husband is not a great artist or a businessman. The husband has got to be, you know, emotional, sensitive, 
attentive, you know, loyal, devoted, right there in that moment to hold that space. As a father, I can't be on my phone. I can't be watching something else. I can't be thinking about anything. I have to be on the carpet with the trucks, making the sound effects, or, or having Hugo jump on my back and we're going for a ride through the house. You know, I, I, I have to be in those moments like that. If, I, if I'm caught up in, in my head with, with something else, I, I'm eating up. But, but specifically about art, authenticity, and the art business, there's two major characters there. So one of them, and this is going to sound silly, but it's just for me, okay? And, and for whoever's listening to this, maybe think about this. It's something that works for you. But what works for me is that businessman, that's Tish or the Tish, which is so dumb, I know. It kind of reminds me of this character off this, this movie. I can't even remember which one it was, but there was a character called The Chad. I can't even remember what movie that was, but it was like this ridiculous like jock type character. Mm -hmm. But... Tish is, is a bit like that because Tish, Tish knows how to go in and get something done. Tish knows how to lead his team. Tish knows how to make the business work. Tish knows how to get the job done on time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and knows, how to, knows how to get in that uncomfortable place and stay there and grind it out. And, and this is where working out because Tish not only is running the business, but he's also showing up in the gym. Mm -hmm. But I need a different character for that art to take over because Tish can't paint to save himself. Because as soon as Tish paints, Tish starts making business decisions. What I need is I need for the artist to show up and that's the master. And now, not that I've mastered this, but that's who I aspire to be. I want to master this. And, and it, any master that I've spoken to, they've, they're always a student, they're always learning. But to me in my head, I've got that character where I'm thinking, okay, now the master's here. So who is the master? So I've got things that I'm focusing on. I've got a particular physiology that I'm focused on as well, that, that are, they're doing something with my body. And I've got a particular language that I use. Now, if this sounds familiar to anybody, it's called a triad. And I actually learned this technique from Tony Robbins. And I've done a few of his courses, read some of his books. And, um, you know, he's amazing in the personal development space. But as soon as I heard this, I'm like, that is so applicable for art. I could make this work for my business. I can make this work for my marriage. I can make it work as an artist. I can make it work, you know, a, a, as a father for, for whatever role I have in my life, I can do this. So then again, I, I, I know I'm all, all over the map here, but let's, let, let me tie a little bow around this because with the question of authenticity, we need to be aware of, of what those triggers are and what we're feeling in that moment. And what are the things that we're telling ourselves in that moment? That's what needs to get recreated in the studio. So there's something when I'm in the field and I'm looking at this thing and I'm moved and I'm saying particular things, I'm feeling particular things, I'm doing particular things with my body that I'm not even aware of, but there's a breath. It's just like, it almost feels like your breath's taken away. It's like, oh, wow, wow. You're just so humbled in that moment. So it's getting back into that state when you're painting. Now you've got a thing. You let the artist create that painting. Now you've got a thing. Now just go and sell it. Go and do it. And there's all sorts of different ways that you can do that. But then that's a point of, of getting into the marketing side of things. The trouble is, is that a lot of artists today, they're trying to market the painting before they've even touched brush the canvas. Mm -hmm. They're trying to sell this thing and anticipate, oh, this is going to be a winner. And you see this happen with so many artists out there. And I'm not judging or criticizing anybody, but it is a trap. Just learn to recognize it. We'll do something authentically in the moment because we're tapped in and we're, we're, we're feeling that feeling. And then suddenly we drop that on our target audience with our market and there's an instant recognition, a response, and the thing sells. Now suddenly we go, oh, you link these two things up and you're like, when I paint that thing, Selling happens. Money, chi ching. So I paint water that I can see through, chi ching. Water I can see through, chi ching. And we get far enough down that road. What happens is people will show up to your exhibition, your first exhibition, and you're on fire. You're inspired. No one knows you from a bar or something. No one knows anything about you. But you, you show up with this work that's on point, authentic, felt. You know, it's, it's, it's sensitive. It's incredible. This is your best work, your first show. Maybe you've got some technical stuff that needs to be worked out. But then you'll notice, oh, the wave sold. The Kimberly landscape sold. 
I got in this trap. Mm. I got known as the Kimberly or the, the, the Outback guy or the Wave guy or the Rocks and Water guy. And suddenly when I want to show up with something else that I'm feeling and inspired by, I've been pigeonholed. Mm. Yes, by a market, but also I pigeonholed myself. Yeah. So when we, when we do this, when we get too much in that external world of when I paint this thing, that happens. What we missed is that it's not about the thing that you painted. It's about who you were in that moment when you were drawing upon your inspiration. That's what created the magic. Not the fact that it's clear water that you can see through and how cool is that? No, it's about what you were feeling. There is something that comes through the work. And I feel like it's pulling, you know, a, a bit of a trick and it's, and it's almost, it's a little bit dishonest in a way. And it, again, I'm, let me judge myself here. I'm not judging anybody else out there. But I have done works because I thought that they would sell. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that's letting my clients down. And mm -hmm. and so what my my diehard fans, my raving fans want to see that that buy my work is they want to see they want to see something that moves them. There's no chance that I'm gonna move them unless I'm moved first. And that's where I have to be. Very well said. Very well said. I hope that answers it. Very long-winded way of saying that. Oh, it was, a, it was, oh. I, I mean, I felt, I feel like it is a necessary, uh, well-winded path to, <laughs> to be able to fully understand the scope of, you know, authenticity, at least in like, in terms of, you know, authenticity and our work as artists, um, and as creators, um, because, you know, I feel like any form of, painting and and I have some online students also um not as many as you but also have a few and um <laughs> I also race. <laughs> <laughs> no I know I'm just like damn bro how do you handle I mean I can only handle like two and I'm already like this is good <laughs> this is my plate is full <laughs> well we can we can talk about that I mean I I, I would yeah. love to help anybody listening to this maximize their business as well you know, mm -hmm. I, and it takes both. As I said, it takes both. So for me, it takes both those characters, Tish and the master. It takes both of them to show up to yeah. make this work. And I, I, I don't even feel like I got started yet. I, I don't even feel like I've begun. Uh, a lot of people are talking to me like I'm I'm already there. Where's there? No, I, I'm still going. But anyway, I cut you off. Please That's continue. Interesting. Laura. Yeah, um, I'll make a comment on that in a second. But um, I always tell my students, um, you know, when when you are learning the craft, you are facing your demons in a lot of ways, especially mm -hmm. if you are looking to be more accurate in your work. You have to face the mm -hmm. fact that when you put a stroke down, it's not gonna be correct. But the more you do it, eventually you will reach the point where you can represent, because of course we're in the realist world um, of painting. When you want to represent something accurately, you have to deal with the fact that at first, you will not be accurate. It will hurt your soul. Mm. You will feel worthless, <laughs> but you have to separate your worth from yes. your ability because your ability is something that's always evolving. Your worth is something that you can't like, you can't put a number on it. You can't put, your worth is like mm. limitless. So, and that can be really hard. And then also to top it off with like, you know, figuring out who am I and I love that you mentioned like self-development because that's also mm. something that I jumped right into when I decided to put mm. a big pause button on my painting it was immediately jump into healing and diving into like who I am what makes me tick mm -hmm. what I love mm -hmm. why do I love it um mm -hmm. what are my wounds what are my core wounds how do I you know work with them because so many people um so many artists actually were we have, unfortunately, a very common streak of being melancholic uh, people. Yeah, and it comes from pain. Exactly. A lot of us are hurting. Oh, we're all yeah. suffering. We're all suffering. And that's why yeah. we paint. We paint to yeah. allow that suffering to escape. And um, mm. it's so hard to figure out what is causing your suffering, you know? Um, because unfortunately, it's, sometimes... Mm. Sorry, uh, you... I mean, I'll just say this and then you can you can say yeah. something. But unfortunately, sometimes mm. we love our suffering so much. I know that sounds crazy, but it becomes mm. like such a natural state of being that 
we don't give it a second thought. It's very strange. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, sorry, you're 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 just mentioning so much there that that I've dealt with over my life. I mean, I I I, you know, I'm I'm no stranger to pain and suffering, mm -hmm. and and, but I I think again this comes down to identity. I think that what when you say that we love our pain, mm -hmm. I I think that the issue is we we don't we don't know who we are without it, and when we when we end up becoming too close to that where it becomes part of our identity the one thing that we need is this absolute sense of certainty with self mm -hmm. we need to be certain that we are who we are and if that becomes part of our identity we won't question that but it's quite a painful process going through this metamorphosis of learning to drop that and recreate yourself without that what part of my particular journey, and again, it, it, the depth varies depending on who you talk to, and even people that aren't artists. I mean, if you're a human being, guess what? Suffering's been part of your existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so this is just part of that human experience. I, I think artists, though, one thing that I, I, I don't know, I, again, I'm not a psychologist and I'm no expert with this. I'm just trying to fumble my way around and work it out for myself. But let me just speak for myself. I felt that the negative self-talk, the um, the feeling abandoned, feeling lonely, you know, so I was bullied in school. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I was a weird kid. I was an American kid from Texas, brought out of that country in New Zealand. And, and I had a few friends in New Zealand because I was, I was a little, and little kids just get along. And, and it was a bit of an international school where I went at High Tai Tai Primary in Wellington. And then we moved to Australia when I was 10. Man, the Aussie kids were tough. The Aussie kids were real tough. Um, there was a real, uh, there's this thing, I never knew what tall poppy syndrome was, but I was an achiever and I wanted to achieve greatness with my art, but I also didn't know how to relate to other kids because I was a sensitive kid. And and so, and with, with Australian culture, there's this kind of, this jesting, this coarse jesting that goes on where, you know, you'll put people down. And, and if you put somebody down or, and the, as they say, you know, take the piss, you're you're not insulting them. It's actually a sign that you actually like them. No, hang on, I'll just <laughs> yeah. I'll refresh my camera. There we go. It's 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 a sign that you um that that you like them. And to me, I found that so confusing. So immediately when I got any of that jesting, I I, I took it personally and I acted put upon and I was a victim and. And so that, that was just a way, then suddenly I had this target on my back and then it just became hell. It, you know, school, school was not cool. But I, I saw other kids getting bullied worse than me, way worse than me. Like I, 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 it wasn't particularly physical, although there were a few instances where it was, but it was mainly just the name calling, the teasing and just being shunned and isolated and ostracized. Um, no, you can't sit with us. You know, no, you're weird, you're gay, you're this, you're that, whatever. You know, oh, no, if you do art or anything like that, if you don't play football, you know, and this is back in the 90s, you know, you, if, you, if you, you weren't on the field or you weren't doing the, the typical stuff, you're gay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Okay, whatever. But that's what I, that, that, that was just something that I wasn't, but that's just something that would yeah, go it was you. A, it was a you slur. know, kids are kids, yeah. kids, kids are, kids are mean. Kids are mean. Mm, but I, I just found that really tough. So that was something. So I had, I had to find a way of, of finding an identity, you know, outside of, of that high school experience, primary school, high school experience. And that, that took me a while to find, but also just, being bullied in the home, you know, I was the youngest yeah. and, and then also not feeling heard, feeling misunderstood, you know, I acted out with weird behavior and, and I, 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 I just didn't know where I fit, you know, mm -hmm. mother had left the picture and I didn't really have a strong, uh, feminine role model in my life. I think kids need mothers. I didn't really have that. And so, and so there, there was all this stuff that I felt went into the soup to make me, me. So how do you, how do you drop that stuff? How do you get over it? Well, I'm not so sure that you do, but one thing I realized is as I look back on those experiences, now suddenly it's given color and depth to the present day, because now I'll go looking for people that are feeling down and out. If somebody reaches out to me or one of my students reaches out to me, 
you know, I'll jump on a Zoom call with him. Not recorded, not anything, just, just, hey, I hear you having a tough time. Let's talk, you know. I'll, 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 I'll feel things for other people. I'm not saying that because I'm so great. I'm not, I'm not trying to win any points with anybody here, but because I, I didn't grow up with that strong, um, you know, mother figure in my life. Now I get to give the best mother I've ever seen to my child mm. because I worked on my marriage. You know, I married well, she's a beautiful woman. I, I love my Rachel just absolutely and now to see the way she's committed to hugo is beautiful it's beautiful and so it gives a new depth and meaning because of what i went without to be able to see that it's not missing in my life i get to i get to experience that maybe from a different perspective but it's there you know but with all this stuff I try to turn it into something that is a positive, something that can be a grotesque negative, something that can be just so that, that, that you just feel stifled. I can't because this. I try to look at it and go, what can I do because of this? Hmm. And so the whole bullying thing, being a lonely kid, looking back now, that forced me into rooms by myself so that what happened because no one would play with me because no one would talk to me i started drawing pictures those kids created a beast those kids created a force to be reckoned with that's the way i get to look at that now those kids you know when i showed up to my 10-year reunion they're like hey tish what's up what's up it's like guess what i'm an artist now bitch. that's what this is what i do and i get paid what do you do i make more than you how about that you know how about I walked away from a solo exhibition with tens of thousands of dollars in my pocket? What'd you do today? You know, I, but I, a little cocky, a little bit arrogant. I know, but but the thing is, is I get to rebuild myself. They didn't know what they were doing. So what do I what do I do that now as a result of that? I look back on those moments and I go, thank you, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That was a gift. Yeah. Thank you for that. So you get to flip that identity on its head. You get to go, hang on a second, I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. Now that might sound like I got that off a bumper sticker. Maybe I did, but I'm not. I'm not, I, I will refuse to play that game. And so now the mode that I'm in is I just wanna see what I'm capable of. I, I wanna see what am I capable of? What can I do? What have I got here? And one thing that helps me tap into that is gratitude, extreme gratitude. Now I start the day with a prayer. Yeah, Lord, this is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today's a gift. What am I going to do with this day? What have I got? And for me to be serving my Lord, my creator, one thing I, I, I have to do is maximize those gifts that I've been given. You know, let's say, let's say, um, let's say, Laura, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to get you a present, right? And, and I, I got you this thing. And let's, let's just say for just the, the sake of this example, I got you a book on an obscure artist and and uh you're like oh thanks you know yeah lucian freud he's he's all right i mean it's not really my jam he's kind of cool or whatever but i got you this book i was thinking you'd really like it and and what what would happen if i if i was kind of observing just going oh you know i, I got her this book and i noticed she hasn't actually picked it up once i notice it, you know probably a bad example but you know you haven't picked it up once how how would I feel about giving you another gift? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you if you if you didn't really <laughs> respond the way that I was hoping that you would. Now, mm -hmm. the reason it's a bad example, but just try and go with me here, folks. But the reason uh, th th I think about that, going, okay, I've been given so many gifts. How appreciative am I of these gifts? Am I likely to get any more if I'm unappreciative? I'm 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 not going to receive the gifts because I'm I'm in a place where I'm not grateful for this moment that I've been given. So I try to tap into that gratitude. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a human being, I have my moments. But I, I really try as much as possible to, to just take what I've been given, maximize on it, because I recognize how special it is. Mm. And so that, that helps me as well find a new identity in that, those moments and, and drop a lot of the stuff that was holding me back, a lot of that pain. And so instead of having my painting process and practice become something that I'm using to heal my pain, now I'm in a completely different mode where I'm rejoicing and celebrating through it.
Mm-hmm. It's a, now it's an expression of love. It's it, now it's something that I have in me that's just overflowing that I have to give. And I'm that way with my teaching. I get to teach. I get to serve other people with what I love to do. I get to share that gift of painting with people. I love this. And a lot of people say it does come through in the teaching. I think when you're on and you're, you're, you're coming at it from that spirit of service and you really love people, you really want to help people, that does come through. Mm-hmm. So um, that's just something that I, I, I tap into and I have to reframe. But I did find as well that, and, and I look at it as a bit of a gift. That negative self-talk while I was painting was just relentless. So as I'd be painting with my brush, I'd be just, you know, I've just got this talk going about, you know, so-and-so still owes you a hundred bucks or, you know, that you shouldn't have said that. Oh, what were you thinking when you did that? Or can you believe that they they would have the audacity to do such a thing to you back then? And then it's just round and round, (laughs) just around and round, just constantly that hamster wheel in your brain. And, and I realized that um, I needed to drown that out. So I started listening to audio books. I, ha- I couldn't listen to music anymore. So I had mm. to listen to audio. And it, it, that caused me then to realize, to stumble on something where as an artist, I get more time than anybody. I get way more time than anybody. So while I'm painting and working full time, making a living, I'm going to university. I'm getting a, a master's degree in business. I'm getting, I'm getting motivation. I'm getting inspiration. I'm learning about things. I, I'm learning about all these weird and different things all over the place. And in the last couple of years since uh, COVID, I, I, I got a, a, um, a pre- pretty much the equivalent of a doctorate or a PhD in, in um, conspiracy theories. So I had to kind of channel and direct that towards more positive things. So this year it's been pretty much 99% things that serve me, that feed that mindset. I did lose my way for a couple of years there, just going, what's going on here in the world? I got my opinions. I don't want to get your show deleted or canceled, but you know, I, 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 I started looking into things and it's not the healthiest thing when you're focused on really extreme negative stuff. Mm -hmm. So now I have to consciously direct my mind to stuff that really inspires me and, and moves that, that this ship in that direction towards my goal. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, so I have to stay in that zone where it serves me. I I, I feel like I'm giving you the most long winded answers here, but (laughs) (laughs) I, I, I hope it it makes sense. No, I'm here for the journey. (laughs) At Bold Brush, we inspire artists to inspire the world because creating art creates magic. And the world is currently in desperate need of magic. Bold Brush provides artists with free art marketing, creativity, and business ideas and information. This show is an example. We also offer written resources, articles, and a free monthly art contest open to all visual artists. We believe that fortune favors the bold brush. And if you believe that too, Sign up completely free at boldbrushshow.com. That's B-O-L-D-B-R-U-S-H show.com. The Bold Brush Show is sponsored by Faso. Now more than ever, it's crucial to have a website when you're an artist, especially if you want to be a professional in your career. Thankfully, with our special link, faso.com forward slash podcast, you can make that come true and also get over 50% off your first year on your artist website. Yes, that's basically the price of 12 lattes in one year, which I think is a really great deal considering that you get sleek and beautiful website templates that are also mobile friendly, e-commerce, print on demand in certain countries, as well as access to our marketing center that has our brand new art marketing calendar. And the art marketing calendar is something that you won't get with our competitor. The art marketing calendar gives you day-by-day, step-by-step guides on what you should be doing today, right now, in order to get your artwork out there and seen by the right eyes so that you can make more sales this year. So if you want to change your life and actually meet your sales goal this year, then start now by going to our special link, faso.com forward slash podcast. That's F-A-S-O dot com forward slash podcast. <laughs> um, no, it makes perfect sense. Um, I mean... I struggle with those same exact voices as well. I'll have that hamster wheel of voices just going on and on. Since I've been working consciously though on kind of like, you you know, things that serve me, um, I've heard them less and less, which is really nice. 
Um, but mm -hmm. a lot of that is also like, I really love what you mentioned about identifying yourself with these things, right? And mm -hmm. what I love, you know, because I've jumped so much into like Eastern philosophy is that in, in, you know, in Eastern philosophy, so much of it is about complete and unconditional self-acceptance and acceptance of everything around mm -hmm. you. You know, things are as they are. And that makes mm -hmm. them beautiful, whether they're perfect or not. Like they're already perfect just as they are. Um, so that also forced me to embrace rather than, you know, like reject these wounds that I carry, right? Because we all carry these wounds that create our mm -hmm. daily suffering and create these um what i like to call like um dialogues that we tell ourselves every day every morning when we wake up right um it just forced me to accept aspects of myself that i had left like that i had you know what what they say like you self abandon right you abandon these pieces of yourself that go rogue and they mm -hmm. start enacting in negative ways in, in your life unconsciously. Um, mm -hmm. And once you re-embrace them, mm -hmm. it oh, it opens up the doors to what, you know, even Jung would call like the, the dark, like shadow work or like, you know, this gift yeah. that you get yeah. from that darkness, um, from diving yeah. into that darkness. And I think the act of creation is one of the best ways to dive into that and to dive into that idea of who are you what do you love mm. and again you know that authenticity of not just who am i now but who do i want to become which i love that you use you know these alter egos um because i i was actually reading mm. a book called the alter ego effect um which is all about that it's all about how do you bring out your highest potential and break that glass ceiling that you have above yourself mm -hmm. because of these dialogues mm -hmm. and these ideas that you tell yourself like, oh, I'm not good enough for this or, oh, I can only do that, right? But if you create this alter ego, um, you can actually completely destroy these things that you've self-identified with and mm -hmm. become your highest, best potential self, which is really beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And who said, who said, like, as you're saying these things um, to yourself, like, oh, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, or, you know, that's not for me. You know, the thing that comes up in my mind when I, as soon as I start telling myself these things, I'm like, says who? <laughs> says who? Mm -hmm. I get to decide, don't I? Yeah. And there's something that, that is really important about looking at examples uh, that are that are put down by others, you know. I'm a big believer that success leaves clues. And if you want to get what they got, you got to do what they did. You know, how are the best of the best in any walk of life, in any field? How, how, did, the, how did they get to that level? Um, I listened to a book earlier in the year uh, called Never Finished by David Goggins. And mm -hmm. there's, there's just, I, I, after, after listening to the audio version of that book, I just realized, Tish, you've got another gear that you haven't even hit yet you've got more in you. You know, this guy is running ultra marathons on knees without cartilage yep. in excruciating pain, but he's just, just one foot after another plugging away, whipping people, lapping people. It's amazing. And then I suddenly realized, okay, okay, well, maybe that's a little bit silly and, and, and irresponsible or whatever. You know, he's there, the, the doctors are telling him, you're not going to run again. You know, we, we, I don't even, we don't even know about walking. You're not, you're not going to run again. It's over kind of thing. And now he's starting to think, I'm going to get on a bike, I'm gonna get, you know, just like a, a different level of human being. Mm -hmm. And so the way I was kind of relating that to my, my business, to serving others, to even creating artwork, I was thinking, what, what, what is still left in the tank? You've got more to give. And, and so I just mentioned that as a way of just saying, you know, there are examples out there of people that are doing it at a different level and and find out what makes them tick. You know, and that for me, that's the beauty of doing my podcast is I get to invite on some of the best of the best. You know, I talked to Mark Majori recently, and I, I think that guy must have bo broken some sort of record with, with what he did. I'm sure he did. But seeing somebody out there that can walk away from that show with... I, I don't know, I, I can't math, but it must have been well over a million dollars in sales from one exhibition. 
and auction results that were just earth shattering. And to keep just that cool, calm demeanor that he's got, he's such a cool guy. But I look at that and go, Tish, that's inspiring. You've got more to give. There's more in you. So I think, I think you know, again, we, we, can, we can start to adjust that identity. We can start to find ourselves based on what we're seeing and responding to, what, to who really inspires us. I used to get insanely jealous, but now I get really excited when I see somebody out there doing awesome, doing way better than I'm doing. I'm like, ah, how'd you do that? Tell me. You know, I want to I want to know. And then, you know, you, maybe they're, they're going to give you an insight or something that you could do to plug into to to, to your own journey. Yeah. Um, but there's there's just so much there. I, I, I don't want to go too far off on a tangent there, Laura, but um, you could pull it, pull it, pull me back here and <laughs> ask me another question. And, sure. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I could I could riff on this stuff all day. <laughs> oh, I, it's it's a fascinating topic. So I, I totally totally understand and I mean I was already ready to like dive into any you know what any of these topics because obviously you know I sent you the the questions ahead of time but um yeah specifically knowing you know that you do go into these really interesting tangents so I'm all for it um sorry no, you're good. <laughs> no I tailored the the questions specifically to get the best juices out of you bro like <laughs> <laughs> this is great I love it because it's like you know knowing that there are other people you know who are first of all succeeding and doing really well but are also you know mm -hmm. facing the same exact problems or the same exact form of like you know yeah. trying to find their authentic voice i feel you know like you know that being like a lifelong endeavor for especially for artists mm -hmm. i mean like for example like titian he he lived to be very very old and his paintings at the end were like totally different from what he amazing. painted at first he was amazing yeah um and it yeah. that just goes to show like in terms of honing your craft that's like lifetimes um mm -hmm. and that, that can be a little bit scary but that also makes you think like well i have my whole life to at least attempt to as you know the ancient greeks said to arrive at truth even even if i'm just like getting closer and closer and never really touching that you know that tangent where truth yeah. exists at least i can say i i freaking tried man <laughs> you know yeah um yeah, yeah so i i love touching that topic with you but then also mm. since you know this uh for my questions i also really wanted to talk about ai art with you um because it's oh, no. such a <laughs> even if it's just a little bit yeah um yeah, just yeah, to yeah, get yeah. you know a little bit of your perspective yeah. on it because i have um yeah. i have friends who uh, I mean, specifically, you know, in the painting world for us as, as realist mm -hmm. painters, mm -hmm. I personally don't feel super affected by it. But I do have friends who mm -hmm. either absolutely hate the hell out of AI art or um, mm -hmm. they or others who use it as a tool, which I think that's mm -hmm. the next obvious step for the majority of us. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if maybe you've also felt this way, um, where like you'll see mm -hmm. an AI image and you'll have this immediate in inner rejection of it where you know it's ai like has that happened mm -hmm. to you um yeah although sometimes it's it's a little bit difficult to tell because i follow a lot of digital artists right. and and i i myself dabble in digital painting mm -hmm. with coming up with some of my compositions and so it's a little bit hard to tell now with um what's been generated through AI and what's what's actually come through the human mind and hand, whether it was using a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq or not, that's still the act of the human generating this thing. But um, personally, I'm really, really anxious about it. I'm really apprehensive about it on a number of fronts. Um, I, I will not let it enter my creative space, personally. And the reason why is because every part of my artistic process is, is a, a, an, an act of taking that thing, which was the initial seed of inspiration or that aha or whoa moment out in the environment and bringing that full circle to a finished painting on canvas. Every part of that, that journey is so vital that I'm there in that space with that original moment 
that I cannot delegate that to anyone or anything. The minute I do, it's gone. It's become something else. Now, I don't want to judge other people if they're going to use it as a tool. But honestly, I don't see of a place where I can use it as a tool without losing myself in that. And that's just not something I'm willing to do. But I also feel that there's more to this, this whole narrative, more to this stuff than we've been told, more to it than a lot of people realize. Um, and it's my personal belief. And again, people can think I'm, I'm out there, out with the fairies, whatever. <laughs> I'm cool with that. I'm cool if people think I'm weird. I've been weird my whole life. But I think that there's something that um, is, is more of a spiritual nature here. And I find it really weird how there's so many tie-ins with what's going on now and what's going on with, uh, you know, let's just say biblical things, things that have been already foretold. I'm getting a real image of the beast vibe mm -hmm. from AI. Mm -hmm. There's something here that is just, yeah, feels extra dimensional. I don't trust it. Now, maybe people will say, well, that's just because you don't understand and you're a kook. Okay, fine. As I said, I'm cool with that. I, and, there, uh, and, and you can fill libraries with what I don't know. But I, I just see something here where out of, out of both sides of their mouth, they can say it's based on these processes and it's just machine learning. But then somewhere else you'll hear of an interview of people saying it is sentient. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means it's consciously aware. Huh? Yeah. We are being used here to train it. It's learning from us, from our inputs. So I don't like it, whether it's chat, GPT, Dolly, or Midjourney. I don't like it one bit. So it's not something that I'm going to be adopting and, and, and using. Again, if artists want to do that to tweak a bit of reference material, use that for their compositions, that's up to them. And, and, and that's totally cool. No judgment at all, but just personally, I won't allow it to enter my space. Um, so that said, though, I am curious about it. I, I said this in, on my show on a couple of different, on a couple of different occasions, where I, I want to make a video where I do experiment with this and then do a, a, a critique at the end and actually do a proper breakdown of of my feelings about this. But just for the sake of that video. <laughs> taking those two different approaches, one where I go through the complete design process, and then two, where I plug in prompts and try and come up with a similar composition using AI, and then we compare the two, and we talk about the journey that got us to that point, and then I wrap up with my point at the end of the video. But mm -hmm. I'm thinking about that video really intently at the moment, just trying to, to, to go, okay, what, what is my intent with, with this? Where am I going with this, this video? And what do I wanna say? But in a nutshell, that's my, my feeling about it. I think art, you know, art's a spiritual journey. For me, it's, it's a gift that was given to me by my creator. And I use that as a way to commune. But if I allowed something else to, to enter that space and take away from that, then yeah, it, 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 it takes everything special and sacred about that moment and it becomes something else. But then people could be listening to what I'm saying and going, yeah, 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 hang on a second. But you use digital cameras. But you, you've you used Photoshop and a Wacom tablet. That no part of the process, even the photographic process, got in the way of eyes seeing something, filtering through the mind, through the heart to the hand. You know, you still have that chain going through that, 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 those links that go through to create the thing. So even though I'll use photographic reference, even though I'll use digital design, I'm actually drawing it using this Wacom tablet here and a stylus, I'm actually drawing it in Photoshop. So to me, it's, it's, it's not really the same. You know, uh, but I've had people in my comment section just saying, ah, well, they talked about this and people were freaking out about it when, um, when, you know, if cameras first showed up, painters started worrying about it, but look, it didn't kill painting. Uh, and then, and then digital, you know, that was something else. And, and look, we, we still need art and artists. So, but to me, this is, this is now a paradigm shift. It's something mm -hmm. completely different where I think that this could be very interesting, where I think people need to be paying attention is what this is going to mean in terms of the economy as a whole. So being somebody that's lost my business twice, gone broke twice, and had to rebuild from nothing, um, 
I, I, I recognize this as a potential a catalyst for something uh, amongst many. It's just one part that could be, you know, it's like our economy is that Jenga tower. And this is just one of these blocks that's being pulled out and, you know, it's, it's being a little bit unstable. But I, I see this as something that could rock the boat, economically speaking. You know, when I lost my business back in the day, and, and I've, as again, I mentioned this in so many different videos, but China stopped buying iron ore. This was after the GFC. And the little microcosm where I was in Western Australia, iron ore was the backbone of the economy. And so you had, it, it, it China just slowed down. It didn't just wholesale stop, but mm -hmm. it just slowed down operation. Now, now you've got wholesale, you know, you've got uh, executives, upper management, all these people of these mining companies, you know, the fly in, fly out workers, people making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Now they're just laid off overnight because supply and demand. Right. You know, demand goes down, the supply drops, and now suddenly you don't need all of these people there to access that ore. Those were my clients. And so now I went from like a waiting list to crickets practically overnight. People yeah. saying, yeah, you got to keep our deposit because we can't pay you. Um, sorry about that. You know, um, we tried to do what we could for people, but, um, you know, I also felt for them. I mean, they lost their job mm -hmm. and, and I lost my business as a yeah. result of that. So I had to pivot at that point. Thank God for that moment though, because what did I do? I went into teaching. <laughs> so, and then I worked out, I loved it. So, so sometimes these things, yeah, you know, there are silver lines if we allow ourselves. Don't, don't get me wrong. I spent some time there being miserable going, oh, it's over. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. it, you know, we, we, I managed to pick it up again and, and find something that, that, that would work for me. And then the, the original painting side of things ironically came right back. So um, I'll just refresh my, camera there we go um yeah so so ai i think will displace a lot of people in the world uh that are working all kinds of industries that are not necessarily art related but they support the arts because these are the people who make the money to buy the thing that we produce and so um th there's that factor i talked to michelle dunaway wonderful artist based in new mexico yeah and um awesome person too I, I so enjoyed my conversation with her she had a really interesting take on this she was saying that as a result of ai we're going to have to step it up a notch and actually show that we are valid by bringing everything that we have within us and expressing that create better art, more heartfelt, put more of that human element and human connection. And then that way we get to say, hey, do you want this thing where as an artist, I was all in and you can see it, you can feel it, man. Or do you want that? That's vacuous. That's fake. Guaranteed this is going to bite you in the end. Mm -hmm. What's it going to be? Yeah. You know, and I think that in the end, call me romantic, call me an idealist, but I think in the end, people will recognize the difference. Absolutely. You know, people will. Absolutely. So much now we are yearning for that connection. Art is one way that we can establish that connection. Why would we have another thing that removes that connection all the more? It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. So that, that for those reasons, I'm out. I hear you. I hear you. I'm honestly, yeah. I am uh, quite a bit indifferent to it. Um, okay. I totally understand your concerns about it. Um, I wouldn't. You need personally... to watch Terminator too. <laughs> I actually haven't watched the Terminator movies, um, but I did watch RoboCop, uh, and that's also scary. Okay. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, to me, I'm I'm a little bit indifferent. I'm wary of it. I'm waiting for the hype yeah. to drop down, kind of like with the whole NFT mm. thing when that blew up uh, three years ago, mm. and now it's like mum's the word on it uh i don't know no one's talking about it as much um yeah. i'm i'm kind of waiting for that shock to you know settle down a bit i do mm -hmm. think that specific careers like you know uh product photographers uh they are gonna suffer a lot because now apparently you oh, just yeah. take a picture of a product and you just plug it in you tell the thing hey put this soda can like in a splash of water and it does it uh whereas before you know it was practical effects they would just like literally splash the water behind and have a backdrop and everything yeah. now that's that's gonna be lost, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, and it's uh, uh, I'm sure you know on the one side 
for a company trying to make a you know it's, it's save money on on that that's convenient for them um but for people who actually care about you know, the craft of making things by hand, it will mm. make their love, I think, even deeper, or at least I hope. Uh, and I agree yeah. with Michelle. I completely agree. Um, mm. I think it will actually create a much stronger love for the handcrafted things. Yeah. And I'm actually part of like a very strange, you know, side of the internet where i have mm. almost all of my friends want to be like homesteaders have their own ki uh you know chickens and and have their own like uh yep. vegetable gardens and stuff and they're all very much about returning yeah, cool. to nature and the return mm. to you know the slow life um i'm definitely mm -hmm. a slow slow life person so for me like i see ai yep. and i'm like i'm gonna leave that over there see how that yep. goes you know sit this one out for mm. a bit and just see to see from the, the mm. sidelines so i totally understand mm. i also completely understand why you wouldn't want to involve it in your creative process because it's it's entirely different from a camera a camera doesn't think um whereas the ai it it mm. thinks for you unfortunately it's almost like yeah because i tried um i tried one of them i tried mid journey uh with our our ceo clint uh, who allowed me to use it because you have to pay for it. Like their free version is like full of people. So you have to like, hey, and he's like, oh, just tell me the prompt that you want. And like, we'll see what comes up. And I did kind of like what you said, you know, I had an idea for painting and then I, I told him, okay, this is a prompt. None of the, none of the images looked like my, my idea at all. Uh, in fact, they, they were nowhere near the level of beauty that I imagined for my painting. So that gives me you know like okay Whew. man is still yeah. better than machine for now um in terms of the consciousness part that is a terrifying notion i'm not sure i think that goes beyond this podcast as a topic um yeah i mean even well, listen listen to some of the interviews with um I uh i it, it, with some i think his name's jordy rose uh forgive me if i'm getting that name wrong yeah, that's fine. but there were he was talking about the creation of d-wave quantum computers mm -hmm. where they were communing with something else you know it's, it's spooky dude it's very spooky. it's spooky yeah um, also, and all you got to do is just scratch below that surface just a little bit you're going to work out that there's a different side to this reality than we're being told uh, yeah. again i'm a kook i'm a nutbag but whatever <laughs> I mean, you know it's a strange strange world and you know in the first mm. place one of the things that even scientists and no one no one in any you know high level profession has been able to properly agree what is consciousness at all and yeah. that is yeah. what it comes down to when it comes to mm. AI. Um, mm. So I also would not be open to allowing a separate consciousness to think for me in that way because it's yeah. it's, it's just it's it doesn't belong in my process. When my process, like yours, yeah. is very deeply spiritual, it's much more set in um, what I would call an organic uh, sort mm -hmm. of you know path or an organic mm -hmm. uh, way of existing processing evolving mm -hmm. um so i'm i'm like you i'm very much like nope um i'm just gonna sit over here and, yeah. and get ready for the end you of times the, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what the, the the really insane part to this though is that now we have people talking about merging with it yeah. merging consciousnesses no, with no, it no. and i'm just like what the have you not watched science fiction movies in the 80s did you not see any of that stuff exactly. like or, or even beyond did you not <laughs> were you not paying attention i feel yeah. like a lot of those that might be predictive programming but maybe serve as a bit of a warning no but you've got things like like Neuralink and and, uh, and these yeah. these different these different mm -hmm. initiatives and and even you know Oh, I, I'm really gonna get your uh, your your <laughs> video and and podcast shadow banned. But I, I, I they they talk about it. They the they talk about it as if it's an inevitability. I, I don't see it. I see a, I see a massive revolt uh, and hopefully hopefully an awakening of sorts. But I think you know the 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 having the property homesteading and having your own chickens. That's part of the awakening in, in a way. For us, it is. Yeah. You know, we we do that, and and this is our way of of kind of yeah run the business do all that stuff interface with as many people as possible but at mm -hmm. the same time have that home that uh you're you can be separate from all that stuff 
Exactly. Yeah. The balance. It's about mm. that maintaining that balance, you know, not allowing any one thing to uh, basically take over because, mm -hmm. you know, even even in terms of like how you were saying the internal external, right? If you allow just your internal voices to di dictate everything, you know, that's bad. So you mm -hmm. have to have that balance of the external of, okay, I'm going to talk to people or I'm going to go, you know, sit outside and listen to the birds um, to get out of my head or Absolutely. move my body, right? It's, it's about balance. Yeah. So, I mean, these days, you know, because I, now I want to talk marketing a bit with you. These days, it's almost impossible mm. to exist as an artist without the internet, um, or at least, you That's know, right. exist as an artist making money without the internet. Because mm. you could be an artist and, you know, just like, do it for the joy of it um but you mm. know as we said earlier most people want to do it and also get paid um so mm. <laughs> in it's terms nice. yeah it's <laughs> nice it's it's oh it's you know it, it it's i wouldn't say it's more fulfilling than just painting for yourself but it definitely feels good when you can pay the bills uh <laughs> yeah. and not have to do yeah, anything sure. else yeah um so i wanted to ask you you know if someone wanted to make that jump right from quitting their day job and just full-time artist, what would you recommend? Mm. Yeah, I, 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 cause I've talked to a lot of people who have been in this spot and I, I, I might be a little bit conservative in my approach, but it's because I, I wanted the best for them when I was giving them this advice. Mm -hmm. But what you're really doing in, in, in today's language is you're creating this side hustle with your art so if you work in a job and you want to go full-time into art you have to get that side hustle up and running it's going to take everything you got in the, in the initial period to build that body of work to learn the craft and to start making those approaches now whether that's a gallery model or marketing it yourself or having a social media or finding ways that you can leverage your product with other content that you create are you the guest on somebody's podcast are you creating a youtube channel you know there are so many avenues that we have now to be able to market our work that what i would recommend doing honestly if, if people are just wanting to go into it full time is first start by just doing it as much as possible while you're working. If you have to cut back on some of those work hours to open up a bit more time, so be it, that's fine. Wake up earlier, you know? It, it, maybe if you have to go to bed, if you're a night person, go to bed later. Instead of turning on the TV and zoning out, if you're tired, great, I hear you, you're tired, do it anyway. You know, you've got another gear to, 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 to you know, hit at, at another level. You're capable of so much more than you realize. And so, um, and I don't want to be insensitive to people's situations. You know, maybe people have got, I, I've got a really good friend who's got chronic fatigue. Okay, try and tell him that. Um, but, so I get it. I get that people have challenges. But it's based on where you're at. Can you honestly say you're giving everything that you've got? And I, I had a friend a few years ago, he was a builder. He would start building at, at, at 7 a.m., but he wanted to paint for two hours a day. So here he's waking up at half four so he can be in the studio and work from five to seven. And then he goes, he gets his lunchbox and he goes to the site. This guy's painting, he's getting in, you know, 10 hours a week painting, it, it, which is not a bad little chunk of time. So he's able to build up some work, sell a few paintings on the side, start to, and then he was able to go, you know, I've actually got something here. Um, and it's when I heard that, I was like, I could, I could wake up earlier. I could fit some more time in, I could do that. So um, that's one thing that I'd really recommend is that is that keep both going, cover your bases. The other thing that you're going to want to have plugged in is you're going to want to have a target monthly income. What is what does that dollar amount? Just talking brass tacks here. I mean, what does that dollar amount look like? What is your mortgage repayment? What is your rent? What's your food? What are your bills? What amount are you going to have to have for a little bit of entertainment? Just to because maybe you want to go out on a Friday night and have pizza. Okay, maybe you want to have a beer or have a coffee or whatever. We got to live our life. Okay, so so what does that look like for you? Come up with a target monthly amount. You know, are you making that with your job currently? Cool, you probably are. So if you are, great. That is what you're going to have to make with your art. And then what I would do if it was me personally, if I had to go back and do it again, I would go full tilt towards that, achieve that target monthly out income and exceed it past what I was working for my job 
And then I'd say to the boss, see ya. Yep. See you later. I'm, I'm, I'm an artist now. And, and I would also have something behind me. And, and again, I was talking to a friend about this years and years ago. You've got to have some savings. If you're not saving some money, and it's difficult for people to save, I get that. But if you're not saving money, try and just start saving 5%, 10%. Just start putting some money in an account and then grow that account so you've got six months worth of expenses. That is not there for you to spend. That's your parachute. So have that month, uh, those six months uh, of money just sitting there. What would that do to you psychologically, right? Now suddenly you can create, not from the point where I gotta, I need this, I need this external, external, external. You've got that time cushion there so you can go, I've got some space right now. I can just breathe. Mm -hmm. And then in that moment, you can just go, all right, all right. I can just breathe. I can just chill in this space. What would I really love to paint right now? Yeah. I say, could I give my, I've got six months in the bank. Could I give myself a week to do this picture? And if it doesn't work, ah, so what? It's a week, you know, think about things in these terms. Be smart about this budget, you know, save come up with a routine as well. That routine, man, routine saves me. Now I, I work on my routine constantly. It changes all the time. Uh, but one thing I've been doing um, in recent months is I wake up at 3 a.m. And so when I wake up at three, I then spend the first part of the day, uh, you know, and I, I devote that time to God. And so I, I spend time in the word, I pray. That sets my day right. That gets my mindset set right. You know, I start the day off with gratitude. If, if, you know, maybe you're not of faith like me, that's fine. But like even just starting with gratitude, what are you really thankful for? Get yourself in a really great mindset. And then the next thing that I do, that's when Tish arrives. I'm in that great mindset. Tish arrives. I start just hosing down everything on my task list that is work. Like the work work, I don't like doing voiceovers. Guess what? I do voiceovers first. That's what I get. I get it out the way. Just do it. And so, so having routines like this, then, then after I've done a few hours of work, cause I'm up well before the sun comes up, then when the sun comes up, I'm looking at that road going, is it light enough where I can see where I'm putting one foot in front of another? I'm going for a run and then I'm hitting the gym. And so then I get that workout time. Generally after that, then I spend about an hour with my son and that gives his mom time to go and do a workout herself, go and have a shower, get cleaned up do whatever she has to do for her self-care. But I get this great time with my son, you know, playing with toys or we go out for a walk or whatever. And then I come back. That's generally when I have my morning meetings. So that's just my, my routine. And then, then after my meetings and a bit more of that stuff, then I've got my creative time for the rest of the day. Then I'm in bed nice and early. The other thing as well is that, you know, I tried to work out where was my money going, just back to the money thing, where was my money going that was on frivolous expenses that I didn't need? Could I get rid of stuff? So that freed up money to be able to put towards things that were really important to invest in camera gear, to invest in a subscription to a particular platform or whatever. Um, to, now to hire people, mm -hmm. you know? So, so for me, when I invest in my business, I hire another team member. I hire somebody else that's gonna help me go to the next level. Um, work out if you can. You can use technology to do this. Wouldn't recommend AI, but you can use some outsourcing, some assistance or whatever to delegate tasks to, to open up that time as well. So, so I, I try to think about where am I spending my time? Where am I spending my money? I also had to work out, okay, where is my time actually going? I've got this routine and all that. Maybe I didn't hit everything on my list. Where's my time actually going? Start a time journal. Write down when you wake up, what did you do? And write down a diary, confession time, zoning up time. Where did you spend this day? Now look at that. Does that hurt? It should. When you look at where you spent your day, then think, okay, I spent four hours watching television. I know where what happened in Law and Order, but I could have taken that four hours and actually done something towards my art career. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, where did we actually spend that time? There's so much time that gets wasted. I, me too. I, I end up wasting time on, on various things. I found out that I, I had in my transitions between tasks from moving from my drawing table to downstairs to my studio to take the cameras from this studio to another space in the house 
to another studio. I'm blessed. I have two studios. But to do that, it was taking me half an hour of setup time every single day. I was thinking, what does that add up to after a week? I got three and a half hours in a week. Well, I don't work Sundays, so three hours, right? So, so what does that do? Well, I could be drawing for that time. What kind of work could I produce? I moved all my painting stuff upstairs. So now it's all in the one room. Mm -hmm. Transition time, done. I go from task to task immediately. So as you're doing this, as you're becoming aware of where you're spending your time, where you spend your money, it, th this is all stuff to do now while you're working full time. And this will help you become that professional artist that you're meant to be. And, and, and what does it take? What, do, what are the best of the best professional artists? How are they? You know, I, I think we build up this vision. I certainly did build up this vision of this leisurely lifestyle. It's like I paint when I'm in the mood. I paint when I'm, when I'm here, when I'm feeling it, when the stars are aligned and my inner child shows up. I, I, and, and I have a latte and I do this and then I go and see Deborah and we, we hang out at the, <laughs> at the cafe or the bar. And then if I feel like painting, then I'll, you know, it, 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 we're not consciously directing it. it. Life is just happening. We're circumstantial. We're not intentional. So one thing I realized is that I had to be laser focused intentional tish are you being circumstantial are you the victim of circumstances now or are you just letting life happen to you or you are you intentional about things right now and so it's being intentional that's my intent so that would be my recommendation to anybody wanting to do this work out that thing we talked about authenticity so we don't need to cover that again but work out that thing that you really love i maybe can i just mention one thing about that go for it the world, the world has got plenty of people that, that there's so many people out there that are willing to cater to an audience. Let them go and do that. Don't let that be you. Do that thing that you love. Oh, but what if nobody loves my, my paintings uh, of, of, you know, water lilies? You know, water lilies, uh, I, I'm afraid. I really love to do them. It's what I really want to do. But what if nobody really likes them? Who cares? Do it anyway. What happens is when you're authentically you, your authentic audience shows up. Do you think people that love abstract, I could go and get a market right now painting abstract. I could paint, a, paint up a store and paint some beautiful abstract paintings and get that market of people that loved abstract painting. But guess what? It's not authentic. I'm doing it for them. Who cares? Do the people that love abstract love what Tish is doing? No, they don't, they don't like my stuff. Fine. It's not for you. Mm -hmm. the, the, what I'm doing is for the people that are, want to consume what I'm producing. And so, so let them have what they love. If you do what you are authentically inspired to do, what you, the, the, your best work, when you're on, when you're heart-centered, when you're focused on that thing that you've got in you and that's got to get out, the people that will love it will show up. Build your business on that. Then couple with that, the discipline, the routine. Now, a lot of people would be thinking, well, I'm just not that structured. I'm not that disciplined. Do you think I am? I might look that way, but I'm disciplined and I'm structured because I am a mess. I am a flake. I am all over the map. I, 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 I lack structure. I lack discipline. So I had to force it into my life and go, no, 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 no. We, we need to level up. The best of the best are this. You've got to find that. And the, guess what? The more I started to do it, the more it started to show up. And now people, when they hear that I'm not disciplined or, hey, I'm lazy, right? They're like, you? No. Yeah. Yeah. And so as, as these tendencies or even, even lack of discipline, like, cause right now, like I, I'm, I'm all in on my diet, the exercise back in the gym, lifting the weights early mornings, you know, there are times where I want to eat the thing that I shouldn't be. And it's just like, shut up, bitch. What are you doing? Pick it up again. What are you doing? You know, and it's like, oh, that's right. Yeah, Tish is here. Let's go. Where are we going? What's the mission? Mm -hmm. You know, so again, I have to play these games with myself, with these identities and just help me stay on track. But I, I really recommend people, if they want to go into that transition into full-time art, it's going to take a gear that you haven't even reached yet. But you can absolutely do it. I'm not here to say it's hard. It, well, it is but you can absolutely do it. How do we know that you can do it? Because success leaves clues. There are so many people out there. I'm talking to, to dozens of people out there. You know, there are hundreds, thousands, 
potentially over a million different people out there that are doing this and they are killing it, crushing it, living their dreams. Mm -hmm. Right. What are they doing? Figure it out and apply it. So I heard a quote recently that I'd love to share with you. Yeah. And it is, if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what hard, what's hard, your life will be easy. Mm-hmm. So now I, I, I'm magnetized. I, I, I'm a magnet for that hard stuff. I want to know where's the hard stuff. I'm getting into it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because I want people to look at me from the outside. Part of this, part of what, uh, what fuels me, and I chuckle about this, but I, but I love it. I want people to look at what I'm doing and go, how are you doing this? That's a, you're a freak. How are you getting all this stuff done? You know, it's a structure. It's a discipline. The more yeah. you do it, the better it gets. Don't get me wrong. I'm still a human being. Mm-hmm. All right. I crash and burn sometimes, but then I learn a lesson from it. So yeah. I hope that helps to anybody wanting to make that leap. You can absolutely do it. The, one more thing. Can I mention one more thing? Yeah. We have right now at our fingertips so many different platforms, so many different avenues that we can reach people. Now, you might be thinking, well, the market's saturated. No one's going to buy my art. No one's going to find me or whatever. Rubbish. They Mm -hmm. will. You also have to be willing to play the game. A lot of people will make a post on Instagram, make a post on Facebook, put up a YouTube video, and they'll, they'll put up this piece of content, which they think is great. And they'll be like, why aren't I viral yet? Why hasn't this got a thousand likes yet? You know, I see uh, Mark Majori got 5,000 likes on his post. How come I didn't get that? How much time did you put in? And the other thing as well is recognize that the people that are doing it really well, and I'm not saying this is me, like with Instagram and other social media and even YouTube, I'm not saying this is me, but recognize that every single platform is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And it has a particular set of parameters or rules that work within that ecosystem. What you do on Facebook is not going to work for TikTok or Instagram. What you do on YouTube is not going to work for Facebook. You know, you've got to learn each of these things as a professional artist and work out how to best reach those people on that platform. And then be prepared to put out content to crickets. Guess how many subscribers I had when I first started my YouTube channel? None, zero, <laughs> zilch, nada. No, no one was there. Mm-hmm. Good. That's the way it should be. Yeah. But then as you start to do this thing and as you put in years, as you show up, now granted, I haven't been the most consistent, but just because I haven't uploaded a YouTube video in a few weeks doesn't mean that I stopped working. People don't know what we're about to drop on them. You know, and we're, we're building up backlogs of videos. We're, we're working on really huge projects. I'll upload a video when I'm ready. It doesn't mean I stop. But how, how did we get from zero subscribers to over half a million? Now, granted, I, you know, Stan Prokopenko has got me whipped and a lot of other people on YouTube. There, there are amazing artists out there that are just running phenomenal businesses that have got so many subscribers. So I'm not getting it twisted about that being the most there is. But for me, I never would have thought that I would ever reach that level on YouTube. But how, what did it take? It took showing up consistently, as consistent as I could, for years. So I had somebody tell me this ages ago, and, and he asked me, it was actually, it was a doctor, Dr. John D. Martini. And he said, what do you want, Andrew? What do you want, to, what do you want out of life? What are you doing? I said, I want to be a master. And he said, very good. Are you willing to pay the price? I said, what do you mean? He said, are you willing to pay the price of mastery? Because he said, every master I've talked to has paid a hefty price to get to where they got. And I had to think about that. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm willing to pay that price. Whatever it costs. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other side of it. You know, it's like, if there is someone out there who has, you know, this desire to become an, an artist, um, and maybe right now they're doing it as a hobby, if you have also the possibility of not having to monetize it, and you could just keep it as a hobby and enjoy it for yourself, that's also fine. <laughs> you know? That's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. No, no, again, no judgment. Doesn't mean doesn't mean you have to do that. But most of the people that I talk to, they want to get 
out of that full time work yeah. and start working uh, on their art business. Mm -hmm. And and so that seems to be where my focus is with with a lot of the content that I put out, yeah. uh, particularly with the uh, with the podcast. But yeah, if you want to be a, a hobbyist and and just paint because you love it or just sculpt because you love it, then that's you. That mm -hmm. that's that's awesome. No no judgment at all. Oh yeah. No judgment at all. Yeah. Um, but I would I would just really encourage anybody to be take that moment and really take a look within and be absolutely honest with yourself about what do you want and whatever that is, whatever answer comes back, that's okay. No one has the right to judge you for those things that you really want to do. Me personally, what do I want to do? I want to serve. I want to create the best work that I, I can possibly produce. I'm not interested in producing the best work ever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the best at painting that's ever lived. To me, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best I can be and 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 serve others while I'm doing that. And so for me, I just had to go, you know what, that's okay. And I want to run a great business. I want to employ lots of people. I want to provide opportunities. You know, I want to provide for my family. I don't want to have to worry about my bills ever again. Mm -hmm. I'm not there yet, but but that's okay to want that. That's okay to want that. I'm I'm really honest with myself about what my intention is. And then I just go for that. And I'm not ashamed of it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and so where whatever that is for you, um, it's okay. It's okay. But be honest with yourself about what that is. And then go and get it. Absolutely. Very wise mm. words. I love it. Yeah. Woo been quite <laughs> quite a conversation no i love it, I love it. it's been fun it's oh, been it fun has. Um, it has yeah um i guess I, I feel like we didn't cover all the questions oh but that's fine i feel like um you know round two <laughs> <laughs> we could do a round two but normally like you know even in in like when i send out the questions for the podcast they do also mention like it's possible we'll skip questions mm. um because yeah. I, I have like, you know, a preference over organic flow of conversation. Like I do have, you know, the guideline of the questions, but I yeah. love, you know, seeing just where the conversation can go. You know, I still like to leave that room for the potential of, you know, hearing something that I wouldn't have expected because obviously, you know, talking to basically a stranger, you, um, I don't really mm -hmm. know how your brain works, right? But I want to... Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I want to allow your, you know, without caging you, and I want to allow you to express yeah. yourself and take things yeah. wherever you feel like they need to go. Because, like, it, yeah. it can be surprisingly interesting or um, or just, like, makes you think in ways that you wouldn't have expected. I, like... I like unexpected conversations mm. on the podcast. So yeah, I love it. Oh, no, it's, it, it's, it's a pleasure. And thank you so much. What, what a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And, and thanks for, for interviewing me. I, 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 again, it's just, it's a blast to have a, a chance to connect with somebody else and talk about this stuff. Cause I, I just think it's so awesome to be, yeah. to, to, to have the opportunity to connect with somebody on the other side of the world and talk about art. Mm -hmm. and art business and, and all this stuff that we've been talking about here. It's just been a real blessing. So I thank you for, for the show. I thank you for the interview. Yes. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you as well. I um, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of topsy-turvy because it's almost you know midnight for me, but it's like very early in the morning for you and you're literally in tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It's, it's if you want everyone to know if there is going to be a tomorrow, then just check with You're me because I there. think New Zealand just about just about gets there first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so, it's, it, roads clear, folks. Yeah, there will be Perfect. a tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, and then also the other thing that I think our listeners would probably want to know is, uh, you know, where they can find more of your work. Um, of course, I'll include mm -hmm. all of your links in the show notes. But you know, if yeah. you want to promote anything that's going on, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Well. Okay, I, I've I've got um, well my website first and foremost andrewtischler.com. We are building another website. I think they're linked, but it's tischler.nz, and so it, or yeah, n for Nelly, z for zebra. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got uh, 
the, the, my main website there. Uh, you can find me on all social media by just searching my name. I'm on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook. I'm not as active on Facebook. It's mainly Instagram, but also YouTube. If you just search on YouTube, Andrew Tischler, it's going to pull up my channel there. Um, I think the main thing that I've got going on, I, I've been all in on Tish Academy, just building that to what it could be and and I'm really excited about the next phase of that and I've got a great bunch of students that are following me there and it's it's growing which is awesome and so basically what we're doing is we're moving from a, from where we are now on Patreon across to a new platform we're building our own thing and that's really exciting and so what's on the cards for the rest of 2023 and onwards into 2024 um, is is courses. So I'm putting out there more courses that are in, in a course structure. So it's basically going to be the art school that I wish I had, where we take students through the fundamentals of oil painting, and then they can just pick and choose what courses they want to do. They want to learn how to paint trees, go for it. You want to learn portraits, go for it. You want to learn still life, go for it. And so we're starting to flesh this out with a bunch of different courses. And of course, it takes time to to build this, but we're we're nearly ready to launch. So that will be available hopefully very soon. Right now, if people want to get in now, they can find me on Patreon. Um, I think for the amount of content that I put out, the price is pretty darn reasonable. I got two tiers, a $5 tier and an $18 tier. But I still have students just saying, I just can't believe, I don't have time to watch all the content you're putting out, Tish. You know, you're putting out too much. So, um, which is good. I, that's a good problem to have. We're putting out so much painting content and instruction and people are coming back saying that that's made such a difference to them, their journey, their career. Um, not only from the business chats that I've uploaded there, but just to the painting instruction. You know, there's been a few people there that have gone uh, pro as a result, and a lot of hobbyists too that have taken their work from one level to another level and they want to go pro. So that's just awesome to, to have a community now and to be part of something that's just growing into something beyond what I could have imagined. And and uh, long may it continue. Um, it, uh, I feel really blessed to to, to have that. And, and I'm really excited about the next phase, but I couldn't do this without, without my team. And so shout out to Olivia, my editor, and also to, to Benjamin, uh, who works with me. Um, and those guys have been amazing. So having people that know what they're doing, that can help, uh, produce this stuff because it takes a lot and we're all working mm -hmm. practically, you know, more than full-time hours on, on the business side of things, just making sure that we could serve everybody. But that's wonderful. We look forward to expanding the team too. So that's what I got going on. So check it out. Uh, if the people are listening to this at some point in the future, just go to tish.academy and tish is spelled T-I-S-C-H and uh, you can find it there and uh, jump on board and try it out. Awesome. <laughs> That's so exciting. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again. This was such a wonderful conversation, you know, from one end of the world to the other. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. What of a course. pleasure. Yes.